Hi there. Sorry I was taking care of some serious business. Speaking of serious business, please enjoy this clip from Mornings with Mike Winters, which, by the way, you can watch the show in its entirety at roswellstalkfm.com. And joining us in studio this morning is Justin Ellis from Builders Do It Center. How are you doing today, Justin? I am great, Mike. How are you doing? Doing great. Another uh, big Friday for football, week two of the football season. So, it is. Uh, I guess the quick plug for that, encourage folks to come out tonight. Um, we will be on the airwaves, but on our sister station, Hero 106.1 FM, for the Builders Do It Center tailgate party, because uh, we'll be covering Goddard Rocket football this week, as uh, they are doing their home opener, hosting Piedra Vista. Uh, so come out at 5.30 for, uh, we'll start the show. Uh, we'll have the uh, Goddard Band Boosters grilling up Super Meat Mart hot dogs and uh, Pepsi products. And I, I believe they're doing the same price point, $2. Yep, $2 for a dog for and, a, 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 dog and a, a Pepsi, and it's a pretty good deal. It's a big, fat Super Meat Mart hot dog. So it's, it is. It's probably two normal size hot dogs at least uh, yeah you might even make an argument for more than that but it's, yeah it's big and they're great and uh, so come out be a part of that and then uh we'll go uh, hang out until uh about 6 30 where we'll start the pregame show and then uh, get you to kick off of course we will have coyote football on tonight but everything will get underway here on 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 Rosal's talk of him at 6 30 with the pregame and then uh kick off at seven as the Coyotes uh, travel to Anthony, New Mexico, to take on the Gadsden Panthers, so we'll have that for you here on the radio. But uh, we do we're talking uh, we're talking home improvement stuff here this morning. That's uh, in case and then Justin, we've been doing this for what three four months now. Yeah, at like least that. right about. And so uh, if folks have missed any of these, there's multiple ways you can go do it. Um, uh, the Builders Do It Center has a YouTube page. It's got all of our previous uh, how-to segments covering topics from sprinkler systems to exterior paint to uh, setting up your decks, uh, backyard barbecues. Uh, we've covered uh, flooring. Yep, hiring a, how to hire a contractor. Talked a little bit about licenses and insurance yeah. and how to get the right pro for your project. Yeah. So if you want to catch up on any of those, you're more than welcome to go there. I know we'll have we have them uh, in the. Roswell's Talk FM website as well in our uh, video uh, archive section. You'll have to do a little digging because you got to do some, well, not digging, scrolling technically to get to down to those. But um, they're all there. You can go and check them out. And uh, probably the easiest way is, or there's links through Facebook too. You can just Yeah, you can actually watch. There. We actually post the video to our Facebook page. And if you like the page, we'll push that information to you. And uh, we also put some other offers and pics of the tailgate parties. And yeah. Tips and tricks for home improvement, all kinds of good information on our Facebook page. Yeah, I, I would say, I would say, week one tailgate party was a big success. Is that clumsiness or just madness? What was that I going on? I don't know. I'm kind of curious. <laughs> so I hope everybody's all right. It's like a bit door. loud on that door. Yeah, that's only a radio station, folks. But anyway, um, so uh, so today we're talking about uh, we're getting, of course, Labor Day weekends upon us here. Uh, summer's disappears after the Labor Day weekend. It, it, in many minds, it's already disappeared uh, once school started, but kind of officially nationwide here when the Labor Day weekend gets through. So uh, we talk about what, you know, everyone's thinking about Christmas and Halloween and all the holidays and gearing up for that. And But really, uh, a lot of home stuff. If you're a homeowner, um, you do kind of have to make a, much like gardeners out there do their transitions from summer to fall stuff you kind of have to do that stuff for your home too absolutely and you know as we started to cool off and got a little got a little rain this week and with uh high school football cooking kicking off last week i started thinking about cool weather and yeah started smelling some green chili in the air and thinking about autumn and and started thinking you know it'd be a good time for us to talk about winterizing your home both you know the the home prep that most folks need to do going into the into the season and then also what you can do to improve your home and make it more energy efficient sure uh, as we move from the heating into the cooling season uh it's it's especially important you know in new mexico we cool more than we heat and so energy efficiency has a lot to do with how you can keep your home cool but in some ways we feel it more uh in the winter because mm -hmm. you get a cold draft or if you have air coming in you kind of feel the cold a little different than you feel the heat and yeah. just wanted to take the opportunity and chat a little bit and talk a little bit about the steps that you can take uh, to make your home a little more energy efficient. And it, it's a huge deal. You don't, I mean, 
like you hear about energy savings, you know, and they always talk about go get the light bulbs and all of that stuff. And, and they're like, you can save a dollar a year or something. Most people kind of like, eh. But when you look at like sealing, you know, making sure your windows and doors are sealed properly, make sure, you know, if like, you, you know, AC units and swamp coolers, that those sealing, you know, that those are sealed properly, you know, there's a lot bigger savings going out those those little gaps in those things than than you think than realize you, you could literally save tons of money on your electric bill depending on how you heat and gas your home and all that but but some huge savings on those bills each month by just doing a couple little things like that absolutely you know there's there's small steps you can take and if you feel like you want to make the investment in something like replacement windows or replacement doors that'll have a huge impact or even re-insulating your home uh, a lot of older homes were not very well insulated. Mm-hmm. Uh, going back to the, the 20s and 30s and 40s and before, there wasn't much insulation in homes because there wasn't any great options. Most people couldn't afford the handful of options that were out there for increased in- insulation, mm-hmm. and they weren't very good. Uh, after that, you know, there were some products available, but energy costs up until the 70s were so low in America that it wasn't a very good investment. The amount of money you had to put in to insulate a home well didn't pay back in terms of the energy you saved. Well, you know, starting with the oil crisis and the energy crisis in the 70s under the Carter administration, it became worth it to insulate your home. So if you have a home built prior to the 70s, you probably need to spend some serious money on insulation. But the technology has gotten so much better even between kind of the advent of the modern home insulation package in the 70s and today that a few dollars spent yields some serious results. And not only in terms of the energy savings, but in terms of your comfort in your home. Sure. You know, being a quieter home, uh, that's one of the factors most people don't think about when they think about insulating and weather stripping and weather sealing is how much quieter your home can be. Yeah, because, I mean, it, depending on, you know, where you put the new stuff in the walls or obviously in the, in the attic ceiling space. Yeah, I mean, if you got thicker walls now, it's going to be a little more sound deadening, too. Well, and even just weather stripping. Yeah. Uh, people don't realize how much sound can come through the air that, that'll that come around a door that's not properly weather stripped. And if we're talking about kind of the basics, you know, if I if, if somebody comes to us and says, hey, you know, winter's coming, my home's a little drafty, I don't have a bunch of money to spend, where should I put those dollars? Uh, there's a couple of projects we'd recommend first, and we'd basically send you home with uh, some weather stripping for your door. Mm-hmm. There's a number of different products. I'm a big fan of EPDM rubber weather strips. We carry gosh, 10 different sizes. They're a self-stick tape product. I like the the rubber weather strips better than foam weather stripping for two reasons. One, they don't absorb any moisture because they're not a sponge, basically. And two, they just seem to hold up a little better. Okay. And they, I think they give a better seal because they're not only compressing, but they're actually stopping that airflow. Uh, and they work whether they're fully compressed or partially compressed. Okay. Uh, and I have brought a, a roll of that with me today in the studio. Uh, there's a lot of different products out there, and if you kind of describe your door a little bit, tell us whether you have big gaps, small gaps, that sort of thing, we can help you find the right weather seal product. That's a really good investment. Sure, and I, and I, thickness is key because I mean, with like doors, things you're constantly opening and closing, you 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 want the right thickness to seal out it properly, but at the same time, not making it impossible to open and close that door. Exactly. And that's the key is understanding how to balance those two things and get enough sealing so that you're having an effect on your, your uh, air infiltration mm-hmm. without impacting the operation of the door. Because if the door is tight, you're probably going to take the weather strip off. Right. And the other side of that is it'll actually wear the weather strip out if it's too tight. Proper gotcha. weather strip should last for years and years. Okay. Um, take a few pictures. If you're going to come in, take a few photos of the door. Uh, depending on the age of the home, there may be weather stripping that was intended to be installed into a kerf on your frame, mm-hmm. and it's just gone missing. It happens. You know, you have it repainted. Whoever does the paint job sure. pulls it off and throws it away rather than painting it and putting it back in. Uh, we have the replacement weather strip for that, which works very well. But if you have an older home with a different style frame, we have an alternative weather strip for that as okay. well. Um, another big one that we think about and it's only a few dollars and a little bit of time, and it's a very easy project, is uh, switch plate sealers. Um, these are basically little gaskets that go underneath your switch plates and outlet plates. You okay. know, in a home, the drywall or plaster on the inside of the home acts as an air barrier, mm-hmm. and it keeps air trapped in the wall cavity. Now, whether that wall cavity is insulated or not affects how well it works, but at the very minimum, you don't want air moving from the inside of that wall cavity into the house. And one of the most common places for people to have leaks is through the the switch plates because switch plates aren't intended to be airtight sure Uh, i believe a package of these and it'll do seven outlets and three switches which is 
a fair amount, really. You know, you, sure. even a for a medium sized home, yeah, you're talking two or three packets. I think a packet's less than five dollars. So, and anybody can put these in. If you can re- operate a screwdriver, you are fully qualified to install these, uh, and they're a great investment. And I would have never thought of that's a place to worry about. You know, because it's out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. You got the plate there, and it's covering. So you're not thinking there's a gap. Because really, when they cut those things, they're not exact. Cut. I mean. No, and, and even if they're perfect, yeah. you know, that, that hard plastic plate is not designed to seal. It's right. designed to cover, and it does a very good job of that, but it's not designed to seal. And you only need to do the outlets and switches that are in exterior walls of the home. There's okay. no reason to do it internally, in between, unless you're concerned about sound. It will actually help on sound a little bit as well. Okay. Um, but primarily, you're doing those exterior walls. And will those work, like, pretty much any cover? Like, if you've got – because I know there's some higher-end, fancier – uh, play covers and things like that will they pretty much work on any kind pretty much the absolute worst you might have to do if you have like a decor style switch which are the rocker switches that have become popular in a, in a lot of homes that were built in the 90s okay uh you may have to take a utility knife to these and modify them ever so slightly but okay. there's they're, they're basically foam rubber you could probably make them yourself if you had the foam rubber but they're pretty inexpensive and pretty easy to cut not worth the effort to no. try to recreate pa- pair the of wheel. scissors you can make them work for just about anything perfect good deal so yeah and i never even would have imagined that's a, a thing so that's pretty that's a pretty good idea folks so, so if there's some of those things you're talking about you know just you're like well i got the ceiling here but that's not there you know that save you a few bucks a month right there just absolutely yeah, it'll pay like for that. itself pretty rapidly and and one of the ways to see if you have this issue in your home is wait till the first really cold night we have you know when we get down into the 20s, mm-hmm. and go put your hand on a couple of those exterior uh, switch plates. Yeah. Um, and, and they will feel colder. There will be a little bit of cool right around them, and that's because air is moving in and out of there that's cold air that is not conditioned. It's not heated and cooled. Okay. So that's definitely one to think about. The other one is to go looking for gaps and cracks uh, in the exterior of the home where mm-hmm. air may be getting inside of the house. And then either using a, a caulking product. This is a product called Deck 10 that we sell from Dunn Edwards Paint. Uh, it's a really good multi-purpose caulk. There are some other products that are a little better, but this is a good starting point. Okay. Uh, and caulking those. If it's a bigger crack, uh, a spray foam product uh, like this. Uh, this is Home Seal. Okay. Um, great stuff's another brand, different brand, same stuff in the can. And uh, there's a couple different versions of this. Tell us a little bit about your application and the size of crack that you're wanting to fill. Okay. And we'll set you up with the right product. But this is for larger gaps. Caulk is really only good for holes and cracks that are up to about a uh, quarter inch wide. Okay. Anything, uh, Anything much than wider that. than that. And it just isn't designed for it. So it's kind of because if, if you look at uh, the output of a uh, the caulk there, usually it shoots out a, what, a little less quarter inch. So basically, whatever's the width of that, if it's anything wider than that, it probably needs to go with the foam. Exactly. Gotcha. That's exactly right. It, with a few exceptions, there's some specialty products out there. But for a general vertical surface crack sealing type application, you need to go with the foam and then find a way to top coat it. And we can help you through that process. Okay. Um, you know, one of the real keys with foam, and, and the foam products have been around for years. They're very popular because they're great for a lot of applications. But we get some pretty funny home improvement stories out of the product because people – look at this little can and they think, well, there can't be that much product in it. And they put it in a, in some kind of a enclosed space and the product expands significantly. You have to be very careful about where you put the product and how much you put in it. Because if you overfill something, it can actually expand and Break destroy off. whatever it's in. I We've had customers say, well, I've got a hollow core door and I want to insulate it better. And they'll take a door and it would seem like there's a lot of space in a door. Well, there really isn't. And they'll put a can or multiple cans inside of a door and it will peel the skins off that door. Um, it's pretty funny to look at. They're not real happy. Kind of looks like the Incredible Hulk's pants. That's actually about right. Actually, yeah, it's pretty. It, it reminds me of that or something out of you know Ghostbusters. When, okay. Uh, so, so with the slime or the stave pump. Yeah, guy it just kind of shows up out of the cracks and just more and more yeah. and more. So it's it's not a good situation. But we can. There are products designed for applications that are enclosed where expansion is a problem. There's minimum expansion products, and we can put you in one of those. So okay. that's right for it. And there's something on the other end. There's a, uh, extra expansion. If you have a really big area you need to fill, um, there's a product that's specifically intended to create a larger volume of foam. Okay, perfect. So uh, if you do go that route, uh, read the instructions thoroughly. Uh, too much of a good thing is a good is too much of a good thing in this situation. Yes. It, you can always add more, <laughs> but pretty much once you've got it out of the can and where you put it, it's not coming off. The stuff sticks to everything, and it will expand as big as it's going to expand, and it doesn't really care what gets in the way. Um, if you put it – we use this product in new construction 
around windows and doors, and there is a spot product specifically for that that's designed not to overexpand. If you use the regular product, it will actually expand, and this isn't a, a crack that has an open side that it can expand out of. It still will expand in the other direction so much that it will bend the window frame wow. and keep the window from operating. It's a very common problem, um, especially when they first started using these products. Now most construction pros understand the differences between the products and select the right product for their use. Sure. So, But uh, definitely ask about that if that's something that will qualify as far as getting some gaps in the – fixing those cracks and things. That's a great way to do it. But – like you said, you gotta you gotta use it sporadically and accordingly. So absolutely. Um, speaking of the windows, because I mean, obviously, if you have an older home that's got the older single pane windows that are not nearly as energy efficient as some of the stuff that's out today, obviously, that's a pretty that can be a pretty expensive investment to go and replace the windows in your home. Um, other than ceiling, is there any other things that you can buy time with that? Uh, that I mean, obviously, it's not going to be a uh, ultimately the replacement for getting the new windows, but something they'll say, you know what, I can't afford all new windows right now, but can I do this in the meantime to help cut it down a little bit? You know, recalking them makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, and, and weather strip as well, just like you would on a door, you can re-weather strip a window. And that makes a, a huge impact. There was actually a study done a number of years ago that compared a re-weather stripping job versus a replacement job on a, an existing double or a double pane window. So this was not single pane versus double pane. This was older double pane versus newer double pane window and compared the energy savings of the two. And, and in that case, the weather stripping actually worked very well. Now, this was a, an application where they came in and remilled part of the windows on a wood window and did some very high-end weather stripping. But you can still get some significant impact out, even out of a self-stick weather strip and a little bit of caulk in the non-operable parts of the window. Okay, uh, Definitely worth thinking at, about. Now, if you have single-pane windows, um, storm windows are an option. Uh, my, my personal recommendation is I'm not convinced storm windows are really worth the money. Uh, depending on your application. Now, if, you, if your deal is, hey, you can install storm windows, you can afford storm windows, but you cannot afford the install for replacement windows, storm windows may be a very good choice for your application. Uh, but they're not an end-all, be-all. And, and they have other impacts. Um, you can, as a temporary solution, there's a shrink wrap product that can be installed on the interior of the window. Okay. And basically, it's a plastic. You put it in place. Uh, there's a little cardboard strip that you staple up to hold it in place, and then you hit it with a hair dryer. And that shrinks it and basically creates an interior storm window. Okay. Uh, a lot of folks will do this if you have, you know, let's say a window that leaks very badly in a bedroom, uh, and you just need something temporarily to get you through a window through a winter. That is an, a pretty good option. It's okay. fairly inexpensive. I want to say it's ten or twenty dollars for a kit that'll do a couple of windows. Okay. And it's pretty easy to ap apply. And it's not bad. Um, it's it's not a permanent solution. It's not particularly visually attractive. Right. But, but if functional. your other option is to put on a sweater and put three blankets on your bed at home, I would highly recommend it. It's a fantastic alternative to that. Okay. See, I've never, I've never done – it's kind of funny. This reminds me of uh, – when at home we're in the kitchen, uh, you want me to aluminum foil wrap something? I'm good all day. I can do it. But that stupid uh, uh, saran wrap stuff? I cannot ever. I cannot operate that. My wife, I'm like, I'm sorry. That's a project for you. It involves saran wrap. I'm not. So I'm, I'm wondering. It's nothing like the, applying saran wrap, is it? That would be because to me that'd be a nightmare. <laughs> that's not something. that's kind of like that at all, is it? Yeah, exactly. No, okay. it's 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 a. It does a not stick to whatever you're putting it on. Okay. It's just a, a plastic that shrinks when you hit it with the heat, so that it's good and tight. Okay, perfect. So good deal. Yeah. Now. Um, now, as far as replacing windows, I mean, because obviously if you're at that point, you're going to have to do that at some point. Um, is that at all a project that should be tackled as a do-it-yourself thing, or should you always let professionals do something? No, it depends entirely on your skill level. If, okay. you, if you're a, a pretty good carpenter and you understand the process and or, or are confident enough to learn how to do it properly, it's not particularly complicated. Okay. Um, the biggest thing with window replacement is the ability to – Make sure you've measured correctly for the replacement window mm -hmm. so that it goes right back in the opening you've created because one of the problems you don't want to have with a replacement job is to take the windows you have out and not be able to immediately get the window in. So what you don't want to do with a replacement window job is pull the windows out and then come into the store and say, hey, I need some replacement windows right? because your sizes probably are not what we have in stock. Um, for a, a, a replacement job, windows are all different sizes right. and depending on the age of the home uh, a sixteenth of an inch can make all the difference in the world. You know, sure. we can order windows that are custom made, 
Um, and virtually every window we order is custom made. It doesn't increase the cost or extend the lead time. It's sure. just the way windows are made. Right. So that you can get something that will slide into that opening and require very minimal trim out to make it look good. Okay. Uh, now, if you don't feel super confident in your abilities, money spent on a, a professional window replacement job is not a bad way to spend money. Gotcha. Uh, it can get done very quickly. It can get done very well. Um, and it just saves a lot of headaches. So we definitely encourage people to think about having a professional do it. So when uh, when you do hire and go that route, I mean, do they strictly just replace the windows or do they make it look like it did prior to the windows being replaced? What I mean by that, like interior work, there's drywall stuff that needs to be repaired or replaced. It, it depends on the way you're doing the, the window replacement. Okay. So you have a few options. There's what's called a sash replacement, um, which is basically you remove the existing sashes, which are the operating parts of a window. Mm -hmm. And you put in a, a liner that goes against the old jam, and then there's new sashes that snap into it. This is an okay option. It's not very popular in New Mexico because it doesn't provide incredibly good air, air sealing. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of the kind of windows that you tend to be replacing in New Mexico tend not to have the kind of jams that those work with, we tend to do more unit replacements where you're pulling either just the sashes uh, or an existing window unit and then replacing it with a brand new window unit. Okay. My expectation if I was hiring a contractor to do a window replacement job is that as part of that, they're going to restore it both interior and exterior to a finished state. Now, gotcha. that may not mean it's exactly what it was before. Um, let's say you have a stucco home. One of the most popular ways to do replacement on stucco homes is to use what's called a, a flush fin window. So basically this means it's got the, the window has a, a fin or a, a leg that sits out in the front of the window that trims that hole because you have to cut through the stucco. This will cover that cut, and it looks like exterior trim. It's very attractive on the home. It's a much easier way to do it than having to come back in and do stucco patching match it up and, all and that. make it match. And I'm, I, unfortunately, with stucco, you can't patch it and make it look good. You could patch it and make it look okay, but you're right. going to end up having to paint the whole wall. You can wall tell to it's get been patched. Pretty it's, much. It's um, never seamless. Yeah, unless you do the redo the entire wall, which may be worth it in, in the case of some projects, but most projects it's not worth it. Um, if you have a brick home or a wood siding home, or if you have a stucco home that already has wood trim, my home's a good example of this. I did a window replacement job on my own house, mm -hmm. and what I had is a, a wood double-hung window. So I pulled the sash, I pulled a part of the old frame, and I used a vinyl window with no fin. So it had no new construction flange, no flush flange, nothing. It was just a box, basically, and inserted those into those openings, um, secured them through the jams, got them square and level into the opening, Trimmed out with a little wood on the interior, on the exterior. They went up against an existing piece of wood that was part of the old window. Caulked it all in, and it looks good as new. Uh, that's the most common way to do a, unit, a window replacement. Um, but your expectation of a contractor should be that when they're done, it's, it's done. done. Gotcha. You shouldn't have to do other work. If you have to have a window replacement guy and then call a painter uh, or a drywaller or a stucco guy, you didn't have a window replacement contractor. Somebody just put some windows in for you. Gotcha. So... If you are going the contracting route, that's the kind of stuff. And ask those questions. If you're doing that, I mean, we've done a whole segment on this stuff, but, you know, you know, be in complete accord with that person so they know exactly what you're expecting to see when the project's done and they know exactly what they're supposed to be Absolutely, doing. and get that in writing. Mm -hmm. You know, with any contractor, a, a written estimate or a written contract is really critical um, just so that everybody understands and the communication is really clear. Absolutely. Um, is there any other aspects that you wanted to cover that we, we got sidetracked on? Or um, you know, one of the, the two big ones is just insulation is a huge opportunity. Most mm -hmm. people that have at homes with attics uh, can make an investment in putting some additional insulation in that attic, either by rolling bats or, or rolled fiberglass out or by spraying a product in, either fiberglass or cellulose. We sell both. I'm a fan of fiberglass personally. Uh, that will increase your energy savings specifically. The other big thing to think about is um, if you are either an XL Energy customer or a Central Valley Electric customer, both uh, the co-op and the utility offer an, uh, a program for some of their customers who qualify for certain requirements to have somebody come in and do some of these weatherization projects for you uh, at little or no cost. Um, in, for XL Energy, the provider in this area is a company called Albuquerque Stair. Uh, when you check the, the YouTube video for this, I'll make sure there's a link to uh, the Excel Energy page that mentions them. Okay. And then for CVE, it's Rhodes Company out of Roswell actually does CVE's uh, home energy audits. They'll come in, take a look at your home, do a pressure test to figure out where air may be coming in or going out, and they'll remedy those things. They okay. will 
Um, I don't believe they do window replacement, but they will do the weather stripping, stripping. and the caulking we talked about, potentially add insulation to an attic. Uh, and, and that's a pretty good step for most people to take. And uh, Excel and CVE do that just because they want to lower the load on their grid. Sure. Uh, it's always an ongoing thing for, for the both. utilities. Absolutely. And the homeowner gets a, a much more energy efficient, much more comfortable home. Definitely. So definitely check out those resources, depending on what uh, who your energy provider is. And uh, who knows, maybe you can get a lot of this work done uh, by someone else, free or a little cost to you. And uh, I like that method myself. I'm a <laughs> big fan of getting someone else to pay to work on my home. <laughs> exactly. But if you are much more hands-on, want to do this yourself, uh, come to Builders Do It Center. If you have any questions about things, about particular products, especially if you're first time dealing with some of the that foam stuff there, don't just buy it and go to town on it. Talk to someone. Get get some uh, expert advice, especially if you've got, you know, tell them the situation. Maybe you're not, you know, maybe you don't need that. Maybe that's not the answer for your particular uh, need there. So just don't. Uh, this is not stuff you just want to napalm on and let it go. And No. Because <laughs> I've, I've made that mistake. It's hell to clean up. Yeah. And uh, definitely, so stripping as far as right size, pictures are always helpful. Take lots of pictures of what you're dealing with. Show it to the guys there at Builders Do It Center. That. Uh, um, you hear the term "picture speaks a thousand words," but I know it, sometimes I'm sure your guys get and there'll be people that come and well, I got this thing and it does this and and you're like, uh, you you know the I don't know how we did this business before people had <laughs> had picture phones. It is amazing how much easier it is to go. I want one of these as opposed to I want this thing and it looks like the oh man, it's just take photos. Yeah, photos are inexpensive. They're, they're free for goodness sake on your phone. Delete them after after you leave us. Sure. We will be able to do a much better job of helping you find the best product for your project with more information. Absolutely. Very good. Uh, do we get all, Justin, anything we missed? No, just want to encourage everybody to come out to the tailgate party tonight yeah. and help us support the Goddard High Band boosters. Uh, 530 to 630, we'll have some uh, cornhole boards out there for people to play games. And we're actually building a giant Jenga game. So if you've all ever right. played uh, four-foot-tall Jenga, you will be able to, uh, hopefully this evening, our guys are... are cranking away on that right now right. and then also i know you were talking earlier about first, first friday, friday yeah. um, definitely want to encourage everybody to come out and support the downtown merchants builders will be participating um, we're going to stay open until eight which is late for us okay uh, in the store we're not going to keep our yard open because it gets a little dark sure uh, but we're going to have the store open and we're going to be running a buy one get one free on all in stock dun edwards paints ah. so if you've been thinking you might want to paint your home labor day weekend this is a darn good time to do it because it is only from five to eight tonight all right um, very limited time offer but a pretty good opportunity if you're thinking you need a little color on your the exterior or interior of your home so maybe if you're not sure your color route yet maybe get that uh, this Decided here during the day and then for five to eight go and make your paint purchase and then now it's up to you whether you actually use it this weekend that's on you but uh you know yeah. at least you'll have the product everything you need to get it going so, absolutely and save some money doing it too. yep so perfect well justin appreciate it and uh we'll see you tonight and uh again here on the morning show in a couple weeks sounds great mike all right take care thanks